Hi. I'm back. I was away for a bit. We're not going to talk about it. Today, I have a new cake design. It's a little bit different from the ones I've done before. No mermaids or unicorns or biscuits. Uh, it's a buttercream flower cake. I've tried in the past to film one of these and it's been a bit of a nightmare. Insert footage. Oh no. <laughs> Ugh, flip that one over. And I immediately want to destroy it. <laughs> I mean, primroses are meant to be half the sizes of Gerberas. Don't watch me. <laughs> Don't mean the gardening community is going to come for me. They are in your this video thing. will be called 20 minutes straight of Faith straight up doubting herself on every occasion. <laughs> so battery. I hate it. Um, but we're going to try again because these are the cakes I'm doing now. I don't really do all of the crazy different stuff. Uh, instead, I focused on buttercream flower cakes, and I'd like to show you what that looks like. Maybe you'd never heard of them. Maybe you have. Anyway, so today's cake is a small one, uh, but it is a two tier because I love myself a two tier. We're doing it for a specific small birthday party. So I like a four inch and a six inch because it looks very impressive, but you don't end up with a load of cake left over at the end of the day. So we've already established this is the size we're going for. Now, this is my design. As in all artwork, sometimes we have to make some adjustments in order to translate this, which I think the drawing itself is actually bigger than the cake <laughs> on a piece of paper. When I drew this, I was intending on using an eight inch and a six inch, and that probably would have worked. But a four inch and a six inch, the peony would probably cover the entire top, which is cute, but it's not as interesting. So what we'll do is we'll adjust the size and we'll probably create a small little dome in order to get the flowers on. What we've got is a peony, some roses, ranunculus. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you pictures of these. I'm not just gonna shout Latin names at you. Um, and some sweet peas. So when I pipe flowers, I like to work from real life. But peonies are only in season for five weeks out of the year, and we're not in those five weeks, of course. So when I can't get the real thing, I will turn to books. This is a really good one. That was my dog in a bean bag. Why does he have a bean bag? Why not? Um, so the great thing about this book is it has really high quality photos of peonies and well not just peonies but all flowers usually used in flower arranging so this is one of the peonies that i'm planning on and all of the other flowers pretty much are in this book apart from the rose for the rose new favorite book i buy too many books get over it oh it's such a good book right <laughs> david austin is a flower breeder in the uk Anyway, they have very high quality photos, also with ideas of arrangements. And the one we're going to go for is the Capability Rose, because it's quite a magenta -y pink. I wanted pink on a, on a grey background, but I didn't want to go for one tone of pink, because that gets very boring and all the flowers might as well just be the same. So we've got this, and I just straight up copied the dahlia that he featured here because I thought I love a pom-pom dahlia and I love piping them and I haven't piped one in a while. So that's the general gist. I think we should pipe some flowers. You'll see the assembly later on. This is the setup. So we have, I have three piping bags of different sizes. Well, these two are the same size. The real difference is the openings. So some of my piping nozzles, like specifically this one, which is super useful, which you can't even see the opening. It's a tiny, tiny little circle. Um, it will only fit in here. If I were to put it in here or here, it would just fall out. Whereas with the other piping nozzles, say this guy, which whenever I can use is a beautiful day. He's a little wiggly. You can't see, <laughs> it's so tiny. Um, he's, this guy is a lot bigger, so he needs a bigger opening. If you don't get it big enough, then the icing can get caught on the edge of the bag. I like to use reusable piping bags. So these guys, I just wash in really hot soapy water because I used to work when I was working in the caging industry uh, with plastic piping bags that you had to replace every single time you used it. And it's just terrible for the planet. 
and I try and minimise my waste as much as possible. So here is my... This is realistically all of the piping nozzles that I use on a regular basis. It's a lot. <laughs> um, a lot of these are specific nozzles for Korean butter cream. I tried the Wilton range. I didn't really like it. No shade here. Just my opinion. So I went out and I found some Korean buttercream piping nozzles because they are by far the best. We have some old favourites. Uh, these three nozzles here for leaf piping, I just bought from a normal set. Um, so yeah, we can go over nozzles another time. It's a bit boring. These are my, like, this is just for all getting the icing mixed. I use this to apply my food colouring. These are all my different food colourings. There are some repeats in here. I just like the cube. Um, <laughs> these are all Wilton gel colours, um, apart from these, which are PME. They're also good, they're a bit runnier. This is my shade range so far. There's so many different shades. Because they're super pigmented, I will use what is actually meant to be a cake tester. But because it has such a thin end, I will use it in order to dip the uh, icing colours into the icing. This is a flower lifter. I've kind of put this here as a joke. Um, <laughs> the few times I have used these, they've caused me in like so much pain. Uh, usually I just, um, will pipe onto grease proof squares, which I will, I haven't cut yet, but I will. Um, and I will peel the fridge, the flour, peel it off and stick it on the cake. These little things, what you're meant to be able to do is pipe and lift the flour straight and put it on. Um, I tried to do this for a client recently took me 20 years to place one flower. This is where I usually have like my reference book. So I showed you this book earlier. So this is the peony we'll be looking at. There's also the ranunculus here and, but we'll show those in more detail. And here is my flower nail. So this is what you'll get in a normal kit. Uh, and I went and found a bigger one, which a bigger flower nail, which means that you can pipe blooms about this big, which is usually the maximum I do, which is just more impactful on something like a wedding cake. You don't want to be piping hundreds of these little guys when you could just do 50 of these ones. Okay, so that is the general kit. Shall we get into some piping?
day. Different shirt and an apron. So today we're going to be assembling the cake. I didn't do this when I made the flowers because the flowers have a lot more longevity than the cake. I mean, if you bake a lot, you'll know that if you bake a cake too far in advance, the, sp the sponge goes very stale. It doesn't taste as good. This cake is really moist, so it probably would survive, but I wanted to get the freshest cake possible. So today we're going to do an assembly of the two tiers, crumb coat, full coat, and add the flowers on. I saw you zoom. <laughs> Don't enjoy that. Right, let's go.
Okay, here is our final cake. I'm... Here's the thing. I'll be very, very honest. I'm terrible whenever I make a cake. The reason that I've never posted one of these flower cakes is because, I, as most people around me can attest, I usually end up hating them and despising them and thinking they're ugly. The phrase that comes to mind is always granny. I mean, it's something I have to grow from. But I actually think, looking at it today as opposed to last night, which was when we finished this cake, I don't know if you can tell from the lighting, it got pretty late when we finished this one. Um, looking at it with fresh eyes in the day, it actually looks really nice. Uh, we did have a few issues when covering the ganache, which is so soft, with a quite rough buttercream. But I wanted the colour, so you can see like the icing's not perfectly smooth, but I'm happy actually. I quite, the grey is a bit, I'll stop picking holes in it. <laughs> My favourite thing is actually the ranunculuses. I think they've turned out really well. We have this ranunculus, uh, one here and one here, and then we have two English roses here. The peony at the top is quite large, and if I were to just stick this flat down, flat straight down onto the cake, it would probably take up quite a lot of the area at the top. So I decided to make a small dome and lift it so that we could put three flowers on, which I think looks quite nice. I've also put in some sweet peas with some little details of like some, um, what are they called? I'll call them trailers for now, I might correct myself. I'm um, just coming down the edge of the cake, because with flower cakes you often find that they're very stuck on the top of each tier and sometimes you want to create some connection between the two levels. So here I've trailed the sweet peas down to make the bottom a little bit more interesting. That is the end of our first flower cake. It was a trial, it was a tribulation, but we did it and I'm definitely gonna post this one, I promise. <laughs> if I don't, then I'm a liar, a dirty, dirty liar. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I think this will be more of a frequent thing now. I hesitate to promise a schedule because I'm erratic. And please subscribe, like the video, and yeah, see you next time.